Sí. Welcome back, and our historian, geopolitical military analyst, Tim Alexander, is back. And Tim, um, you know, you pop in on various days, and of course, put up information on the uh, uh, our live stream TV channel as well. Uh, you've got an interesting point you made just in the break, just before the show started. I'd like you to expand on that and tell us what uh, well, all this uh, means. Uh, I, today, I think uh, we're the, the place we're at right now is kind of between. Uh, uh, between the verge of the Third World War, a uh, war in Syria, I think we've kind of temporarily at least won that, and uh, the next stuff coming down the road. Uh, but it's if you don't know history, you don't know where you're at and don't know where you're going. And there's a, two very important uh, uh, events, uh, anniversaries, that are coming up. Uh, the Russian commemorating the Russian fleets of autumn 1863 is an interesting uh, article that's out. Um, in September the 24th, 1863, the Russian Baltic fleet arrived in New York City. And uh, a few days later, on October 12th, the Russian Pacific Squadron arrived in San Francisco. Now, Tsar Alexander II sent these fleets to the United States to protect the United States from a joint invasion by Britain and France. And this this all goes to the power of the Rothschild-dominated uh, global banking cartel and why we had a civil war. Uh, slavery was a great problem, not only in the United States, but around the world. Uh, most countries managed to end slavery without having a, a vicious war. And the American Civil War killed more Americans than any war we've ever been in, including this, un, you know, the 12-year nonsense in, in Afghanistan, World War One, World War Two, etc. No war has been more bloody to Americans than the American Civil War. Well, the Rothschilds set the Civil War up. They, in fact, they caused the War of 1812. But they set the Civil War up by buying up newspapers and and driving the North and the South further apart. We could have reached consensus. Slavery was getting to the point where it really wasn't profitable. And slavery was a vicious, horrible thing that was always about economic exploitation. Uh, but anyway, so we, we got into a, a vicious civil war. Now, Abe Lincoln, he said, uh, he said, I have two enemies. He said, I have the rebels in front of me and the bankers behind me. And he said, of the two, the bankers are by far the most dangerous. Now, the Rothschilds in their London branch were loaning money to the Confederacy. The French uh, branch wanted to loan money to the Union Army at 30% interest. And Lincoln said, there's no way in hell I'm paying 30% interest on money. That's, that's virtually usury levels. And he said, look, uh, why do we need to buy money, uh, to, to uh, borrow money from these clowns in Europe in the first place? Uh, we can issue our own money, and uh, we'll do that. Greenbacks, they were called. And he did. And let me read um, something that a London newspaper published. Uh, and I'm getting this on Mike Rivero, uh, uh article today because he, he did it really well. But um, what the uh, what a London major London paper said was, if this mischievous financial policy, which has its origins in North America, shall become in indurated down to the future, then that government will furnish its own money without cost. It will pay off debts and be without debt. It will have all the money necessary to carry on its commerce. It will become prosperous without president in the history of the world. The brains, wealth, and, and wealth of all countries will go to North America. That country must be destroyed or it will destroy every monarchy on the globe. And that was the London Times. And they were referring to Lincoln's decision to issue government green banks to finance the Civil War rather than pay the Rothschild banks 30% interest. Uh, Britain and France, encouraged by the, the banking plans, uh, 
were prepared to invade the United States, but it was the Russian fleet off of New York and off of San Francisco that prevented that from happening. Now, right after the Civil War ended, President Lincoln was assassinated, and there is good historical evidence to indicate that the the, the scheme uh, was financed by the global banking cartel families. A year later, uh, Tsar Alexander II was also uh, assassinated, and again, same suspects. Now, right. why, how does all this tie in together? Well, it does because we have had a element in the United States, in France, in the the United Kingdom, uh, that have been screaming at the top of their lungs, uh, we've got to go in to Syria, we've got to invade, we've got to take military action. They're they're gassing their own people. There's always something they're doing. Somebody's always doing something, and it's always a, a prime cause, but we've got to go to war. Uh, of course, the war kills ten to a hundred or a thousand times more people than what there was we went in the war far in the first place. But that's forgotten. Well, something happened in the House of Commons. Now I know you know a number of people in the House of Commons, and I'm, I'm a British peer of the realm, but I, I don't claim to be any kind of expert on the British House of Commons. Uh, but something happened. My guess is, even at the maybe at the very top. Uh, the prime minister wanted it to happen. I can't swear to that, but I kind of think maybe that that's the case. But what happened is the government lost a vote. And suddenly the people in the House of Commons, the members of parliament, about, uh, what, maybe three weeks ago, said, no, the United Kingdom is not going to go to war against Syria. We do not support that, and we will not support that. And that put a stop to it. Now, why did these people get off the the party line, so to speak? Well, the reason I think is is you know politicians tend to be very self centered, very narcissistic. That's how they they get by. They they, they tend to be uh, uh, I call them political whores. Their morality is uh, just about non existent. But being narcissistic, um, the idea that we might have been entering uh, maybe the Third World War and it wouldn't be safe to come out of your, uh, your caves, your bunkers for years, somehow that managed to get through to uh, a lot of MPs that this is crazy. This is beyond crazy. This, this makes no sense to anybody to, to start a third world war with 21st century weapons of mass destruction. And suddenly enough of them said, no, I'm not going along with this. And it stopped. And then all of a sudden, on the American side, you got more and more. Basically, uh, the reason that uh, we've had uh, kind of an agreement uh, brokered by Russia is they knew, uh, Obama knew, he didn't have the votes. He didn't have the votes in the House of Representatives. He didn't have the votes in the Senate to go to war. Why? Well, because you got a lot of congressmen and senators say, hold it. We go to war. I can't play my uh, Tuesday and Thursday golf games. Uh, The golf course won't exist, you know. Uh, Somewhat radioactive if there is a golf course at all. Yeah, and, and, okay, maybe I get a spot (laughs) in a bunker for congressmen, but what kind of life is that? They even call them hotels, but it's like living inside a tomb. I call it, how about... uh, if you have what's called sarcophagophobia, which means fear of being in a sarcophagus, if you're out there and you're a global elite, how about being like the Morlocks of the time machine, locked exactly. underground for 80,000 years? Exactly. <clears throat> and so we are now at a very strange place in human history, and we, we need to talk about that when we get back, because we've got opportunities and dangers. Absolutely. Back in a moment with Tim Alexander. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, we're going to talk about the danger of the nuke trial causing a Chernobyl-style event and nuclear reactors and blowing our power grid to pieces from these idiots in our government. And we're back with Tim. Um, expand on your thesis that you're mentioning there because... I think people need to see the spiritual side of this, which is why 
uh, you're one of the best broadcaster and analysts on this because you understand the the spiritual military applications of the demonic horde. I call the the people of clay and iron, which is our ministry, clay and iron ministries. That's why the other website's clayandiron.com. You're going to start to see a lot of news news items, articles there, and prophetic warnings because we're very getting very close to the time of Jacob's trouble. Obama on January 13th promised a partitioning of the state. And we have the demonic horde, as I mentioned, uh, off uh, air. Uh, the worst of the worst, and you know, are trying to pull those who are even billionaires or corrupt over their little red line that says, no, no, I don't want to be able to die. I want to be able to drive my Bentley or take my private air jet, airstream jet, and go to my private island or you go up my fancy yacht and, and circle the globe. That's not possible if you have World War Three. Not possible yeah, if you and, have, and I think I, I think people at many levels are waking up to that. Uh, if you're like most of us, and uh, uh, be it Doctor or Earl Sterling or what other, notwithstanding, uh, we're just uh, we're just average people. We have families, we have friends, we go down to the store in our car. We you know we have a normal life. And uh, that will end if World War III happens. That will end if the total uh, global economy absolutely crashes because these mm-hmm. banksters want to get to their, their their new world order. Right. Okay. Now, what we have right now that's happening, and it's it's because of the alternative media, and to some extent, indirectly, it's because uh, of the mainstream media. Uh, 15, 16 years ago, I was working to set up a third, uh, what I called the Third Millennium Global News. It was going to be the fourth evening half-hour television newscast nationwide. And at the last, I had $175 million in venture capital funding lined up. Last minute, my wife was found to have uh, terminal ovarian cancer, and I, I canceled everything to take care of her. She died 11 months later. But anyway, uh, the... Um, at that time, you know, there were 20-some companies that were major players in uh, the, the mainstream news media and some smaller ones that were significant players. And I knew some of these people. I knew the heads of some of them uh, in both the United States, uh, Canada, and, and uh, the United Kingdom. Well, what's happened since then, you now have six companies that own uh, roughly 95 to 97 percent of mainstream news media in America, and the same is true in many other countries uh, in the in the first world. You have this incredible concentration, and they're all dominated, and all the the the, the lines of control go back to the global banking cartel families, and the people that running them are almost all exclusively Zionists. So you get this uh, you get the party line. If you turn on and I, I and I have even watched uh, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, Fox for several months now, but I'm probably better educated uh, and, and I read more news on a daily basis than, than 100 average people because all you get from them is propaganda and it's becoming very apparent. Uh, you know, in the Soviet Union, uh, the, the Pravda, which means truth, uh, was the big newspaper in Moscow. And, the, and the, the, the joke was there is no truth in the truth. And people just, uh, uh, it, they blacked out that nonsense because it was just lies and just petty nonsense that they realized that it, it, it meant nothing. It was, it, why bother to read this crap because it's, it's nothing but lies. Well, you're, you, we've got kind of to that point now where if you have a brain and you listen to NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox, etc., you know that this is propaganda. It's gobbledygook. It's, it's, it's written for a mentality of an eighth grader. And uh, if you're an adult with a brain, you say, you know, this, this doesn't add up. This doesn't make sense. So people are going to something that's called the Internet, the greatest uh, source of knowledge and information in human history, and the the globalists absolutely hate it. But now that it's here, they don't. They, it, you know, it's very difficult for even for them to kill it. It's going to take a global war for them to really pull the plug. And people can go to the internet, go to shows like yours, go to websites like mine, uh, Europe, uh, and and they can actually get some news, some real news. And people are doing that, and people are waking up, and they're saying, hold it, 
We've had wars for umpteen years now in the Middle East. Wars that basically benefit uh, who? Well, they don't benefit the American public. They certainly don't benefit our poor boys that are getting uh, shot and killed over there. Uh, who are they benefiting? Well, let's see. They benefit the military-industrial complex. They benefit those uh, families that own the Federal Reserve System because that's the biggest driver of deficit spending there is, is war. Uh, they benefit uh, the expansionist uh, uh, races in Israel with their, their, their greater Israel concept. But the great bulk of the American people, and even the Israeli people, and then the European people, it doesn't benefit them. It's a super tiny elite, and those guys are nuts. All right. Well, they're nuts if, if, if you view things in it from a human perspective. That may be a third world war with 21st century weapons of mass destruction. It makes absolutely no sense. There's no justification for it, and it's going to wipe out most of us. Nobody wins in that war. It's a demonic-driven right. event. And, and when you get there, then you begin to say, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And this is all tied into the Federal Reserve System. This is all tied into the fact that we're now in a global depression, even though they keep telling us uh, we're in a recovery. A recovery with 100 million Americans of working age out of work. A recovery with 50 million uh, families in the United States on food stamps. That's a recovery? I don't think so. You know, yeah, I then, mean, of course, they have ben, then we have Ben Bernanke printing more money, which is... On the Drudge Report today, they show a picture of a toilet roll with dollars on it. Uh, the dollars <laughs> well, plunging, I mean, the stock you know, market's going into orbit. Listen, literally, uh, it, uh, that, uh, the, uh, you can get the point. In uh, Farmer Rhodesia, they, they printed so much currency, they were in the thousand uh, or trillion dollar bills uh, area. In, uh, uh, in uh, Germany, after the First World War, I have a, a collection of old worthless currency here. And I mean, I paid 10 cents or less for some of this stuff that was uh, thousands and tens of thousands of, of uh, 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 marks, German marks, and it literally wouldn't buy you a loaf of bread. Uh, yeah. So you, you can get into place uh, in terms of inflation very quickly. But the point is, uh, and I, I deal with it, I teach at a college, and I deal with people, uh, young people on a daily basis. You know, I, I ask my students, if you really wanted to, can you go out and get a job, $10 an hour, 40 hours a week, uh, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks? And most of them say no. Ten dollars an hour is nothing. Ten dollars an hour you can't raise a family on. That's four hundred dollars a week. Uh, maybe in the fifties that was a lot of money. In the sixties it wasn't bad, but uh, in twenty thirteen it's starvation. It's food stamp money. And uh, why are we here? We're here because deliberate policies to destroy the United States, to destroy the middle class, and it's all been done by these demonic people that want to bring death, destruction, and hurt to the planet. And now we have an opportunity to reach out and put a stop to this. Well, we, as, well as believers, God's given us some time. He's given us some grace. We'll be back in a moment with Tim. Joining us, Chris Harris, a major update on the NERC. Tim, we are joined with Chris Harris. Chris, there's lots of things to talk about, so let's roll. We've got uh, the NERC, uh, North American uh, Corporation, testing uh, and dangerously testing the integrity of the power grid system and the possibility of causing a Chernobyl style, which was triggered off by a test, nuclear meltdown, uh, the danger of destroying power grid infrastructure and equipment, and of course, we have a new major update in Fukushima, so let's. Uh, Let's fill us in on the details. Okay, yeah, starting off with the grid exercise, I, I'm really glad that uh, Professor McCann was on your program also expressing concern about that. I guess we're not, I wasn't alone, and, and uh, it, rightfully so. You know, the, the grid is a complicated, uh, complicated animal. It's out there. It doesn't run by itself and it takes a lot of people to, to keep it stable and to keep the voltage up. I and mean, really, to do that, they're, they're constantly decision-making with uh, people, the system operators out there. If they do something stupid during this exercise and actually inject 
some sort of a signal that would destabilize the grid and cause operators to have to instantly respond. Well, there's going to be a mistake, and we also know that we don't know how, we don't even know how the whole system uh, works, just based on the San Diego uh, loss of power that we had several years ago. We discussed that on your program also because we didn't understand the ramifications of not dropping off the uh, low voltage lows on that. And everybody thought it would be just fine, and it wasn't. It actually dragged down the voltage yeah. and it caused the San. So we well, don't even know bur- how the thing works. And it burned out the steam out. turbines, and, and and this can happen in geriatric reactors. These were new. Within two years old, new new t- steam turbines, two of them, from Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, totally burned out. Most of the reactors in America are 50 years plus old, with lots of nuclear material on site. Uh, infrastructure has not been hardened. The power grid was hardened in Canada, but not hardened in America after they had major reports back since the 1987 power blackout in Quebec City. Uh, and in northern Quebec, that actually blacked out all the way to the northwestern, northeastern United States to New York City. Uh, since that time, America has done nothing. This is insanity. And what's going on now is we, we now have the outgoing director of DHS threatening us that there's going to be a power blackout and they're going to do this test. There's a 100% chance of a CME caused by the sun. They're going to actually do it on the dates, according to McKinney, which is the closest pass in the uh, plasma alignment with Mercury that can do a CME. But they don't have any absolute knowledge of it's going to be Earth-directed. And then they're talking about cyber terrorism. So the government, I think, all the signs are up that they're trying to do a false flag. And the fact is even just testing the system with the property, stressing the uh, nuclear technicians on site of these nuclear reactors and the power grid, this is a stupid activity that hasn't previously hardened the grid before they do the test. Yeah, it's a potentially stupid activity, and just remember... Yeah, as you correctly put, as you correctly stated, that Chernobyl was also caused by an evolution that was not completely thought through, and it wasn't uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, 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 the system wasn't actually uh, operated correctly, and that's what brought us Chernobyl. It was a completely self-induced event, and here we're going to do something. Whether even if it's not going to be a false flag, as I said last week you're still going to tax the operators into having to do something. These are people that have to make split-second decisions, and that's not a good idea. So don't, don't let this go live, and don't let it, and, and don't, even, don't even let it get out of control. And that's, that's, what, that's what I'm admonishing the, uh, the NERC uh, designers of the exercise to do. Um, it, you know, the, the ramifications could be widespread and... Uh, whether they whether they even want that to happen or not, it's, it could happen by itself. That's all I'm letting. That's all I'm saying. Very, very exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we had some uh, as we discussed so that, before. What about oh, Fukushima? Uh, Fukushima had a massive release of a thousand plus tons of radioactive water uh, in advance of the typhoon that struck, and today had a five point three uh, earthquake in the Fukushima prefecture. So. The plant is breaking down. We post up all the links that you've sent me, Chris. Uh, this is very insane. There's no international action by the United States government, NATO, the United Nations, the International Atomic Energy Agency. As they say in New Jersey, nobody knows or nobody's doing nothing. It's just amazing. Yeah, well, you know, we, we also looked at, uh, uh, well, yes, that's right, I did look at that. There was an earthquake today, right after, I guess, after we, we uh, talked this afternoon. And uh, I don't have any reports of any damage. That doesn't mean nothing happened. Because even in some of the headlines that we're talking about today, the plant vent that's shared between Fukushima Unit 1 and Unit 2 is found to have cracks in the support structure of the 400-foot plant vent. It's a big pipe that goes vertical, and you can see it looks like the Eiffel Tower kind of a, kind of a uh, uh, truss type of a uh, tower. So I don't know if anything happened to that yet. And... and also, in some of the headlines, if you're a civil servant now in Japan and you go ahead and start telling the truth about about Fukushima, oh. why, why you could be put in jail? That's, in, that's or an actress to. or a journalist that's not certified by the government to be have the right to speak. If you're even a certified yeah. journalist when carrying a journalism card, and you speak without government approval, you're going to the big house. Yeah, and that's it's, that's really so. What are they hiding? Well, obviously they're hiding something. And, well, uh, hey, hey uh, right after the 2020 know, they, they, Olympics, guys, they can they can throw us all in jail, but they can't make that radiation go away. 
Well, you know, actually, after they ran the 2020 Olympics, they're thinking up all the new radioactive events they can have, like the <laughs> plutonium, like the plutonium javelin throw, the, you know, the the, the tritium Olympic uh, swimming competition. <laughs> <laughs> you have a great imagination, Dr. Bell. <laughs> I would say the most glow in the dark contest, you know. <laughs> yeah. We turn off all the lights and we see if the Olympic competitors can run around the race and not bump into each other because all they have to do is keep their eyes open and the radioactivity from their body through their eyes will actually see their ways through the dark. Uh, you would ask me what the most important uh, article or headline would be, and it would have to be that. Uh, that uh, Fukushima Unit 3 still has steam sporadically venting from it. Remember, we talked about this a long time ago that cold shutdown is a myth for those, and I stand by that. Yeah, I cold. stand by that for several years. The only thing cold is the bodies of the new Fukushima workers, including the, re the recent deaths of the director that was a hero trying to do at least something in the face of getting no funding, no support from the Japanese government, no support from General Electric, which, by the way, was... Uh, the, the International General, General Electric Director was one of the so-called czars under the Abominator. That's his term, by the way, from now on. I don't want to hear him call Obama or the president. His name is <laughs> Abominator. The Abominator that shall desolate. The Abominator that shall lie. The Abominator that shall take our guns. By the way, the latest thing is the Abominator wants to use the EPA to say, you can't have ammo because it's lead and it gets in the environment. So guess what? You can have all the guns you want, people. You just can't have ammo. What do you think of that? Yeah, well, uh, I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep my lead uh, just fine. But um, well, I'll uh, tell you, they can have my lead and they can have my guns, one uh, one round at a time. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? But uh, guys, look. Uh, the, the, I always say, let's go back from the forest. Let's pull way back. And, and if we pull back and look at this whole Fukushima issue, um, we can say, okay, early on maybe they were afraid because there was a nuclear weapons program there to say or do too much. But the point is, it's been, what, two years now, two and a half years, something like that. It's been a long time. And what have they really done to remediate all the, 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 the horrific problems? I don't think they've done anything. I, I, you know, they built some water catchment uh, tanks, which obviously are, are temporary. Uh, the cores have melted through uh, the concrete in two or three of these facilities, and things are going to get worse and worse. Uh, so you have to ask yourself after a period of time, are we dealing with a multi-year gross incompetency? Are we dealing with a kill program by the, the, the globalists? Is this, you know, is this something even more sinister? Is it raw stupidity or is it something really evil? How about um, raw evil mixed with malevolent stupidity? The situation in Fukushima is going to get considerably worse. Uh, uh, I have a, um, I'll tell you, I live in Southern California. A lot of people, oh, you poor people in Southern California. No, no. The radiation may be worse in St. Louis or in Eastern Europe. It can go over transpolar. Uh, you need to filter your water, whether you're getting well water or groundwater. It's going to eventually get to your well. You need to have a whole host system. We have our pure water whole host systems available now. Our other systems do not get a Berkey. Our other systems think they're equivalent. They're not. They're going to get rid of cysts and parasites. That's it. They're not going to get rid of the toxic chemicals uh, completely. They're not going to get rid of fluoride. They'll tell you they do. These filters are not going to generate what we call lab rage and grade water. You need to get our radiation protocols, and you need to be prepared to cover your vegetables if you have an outside garden. And at the minimum, you need to have the materials to build a greenhouse, even if you have a farm, because we could literally have the atmosphere so radioactive from three major sources, Fukushima, a proposed and pushing for a war in the Mideast that's going to hit the Bashir reactor, and an almost certain, triggered by this event in the Mideast, exchange of nuclear weapons between India and Pakistan. Because Pakistan's have committed their nuclear weapons to defend Iran. If Syria falls, Pakistan is going to defend Iran with nuclear weapons against Israel, and their military bases will be targeted, plus European cities. This is going to get very bad. 
Do you notice Armageddon. as we back down from Syria, mm-hmm. you're not hearing the reports of, of uh, minor classes and, and bigger classes in Kashmir. You're not hearing the reports of, of uh, Chinese and Japanese warships uh, in the Pacific uh, with their, their islands in dispute. Uh, all those yeah, things like the, are like the Dunco Islands, interconnected to the Syrian thing. Yeah, they're all connected because the battle lines for World War III are now being drawn. The navies are operational. We're in DEFCON 3, which is one step below a nuclear war launch on command sequence level, level DEFCON 4. The Russians are similarly there. We've re-scrambled and we had mothballs for many years. Our B-1P long-range nuclear bombers, they're now in the air 24 hours a day. The uh, the idiot-in-chief, the abominator, that's his title now, is now presiding over being pulled by the bankers toward literally launching the end of the world. And again, I can tell you this right now as an absolute, this is no longer a, a kind of a proposal. Obama is the one who's going to pull a rabbit out of the hat with the global support and at least temporarily get a peace treaty there in the Middle East because if this doesn't settle down and they start any kind of even regional war with conventional weapons, which the Israelis have not used, they've used battlefield tactical nukes, and advanced weapons to turn into dust an entire brigade of Syrian soldiers protecting Russian weapons. They, quote, put the Navy of the Israel, NATO, and the Americans in danger. Uh, Syria did not respond because they knew any kind of response, including the stupidity of using chemical weapons, would retaliate with a full-fledged attack. Russia's basically said, yet, so does the Chinese. They blocked it in the Security Council. And they have chemical proof they're going to prove to the United Nations they're a bunch of liars. Uh, McCain's a maniac. This guy should not be let out of the Alzheimer's psychiatric unit. Uh, John Kerry looks like Lurch from the uh, Adams family. He needs to stay. <laughs> You're right, he does. <laughs> he, he needs to stay on the set and not ever go out in the, in the public. We have a lot of these politicians that are beating the drum for war and saying, yeah, it's sad as... For sure he's done it, including the writers of these articles, like in my UT North County Times here in San Diego. You need to go to, quote, a H-E double hockey stick. This is really ridiculous. Uh, do you understand if you attack Syria, it's the end of the world as you know it? <clears throat> They're not just going to blow up Damascus. That's the first step in nuking that city, in nuking cities all over Europe, in nuking our cities in America, in destroying the planet. Don't they understand that literally God is going to have to intervene to cut short or no flesh would survive? And you can see Obama being set up as a, quote, peacemaker with nine days of his first inauguration getting the Nobel Peace Prize because the globalists want him at least to have a temporary peace treaty so they can meld together Russia and China under their wings so they can control their centrally controlled economies and bring them into the arms of the mark of the beast. That's what's next. It's not a Syrian war. It's a peace treaty in the mark of the beast. That's what's coming. Well, and then when it breaks about, down, then we're going to have Armageddon. Control. It's all about control and power. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and following either God or Satan. And most of us are following God. We may be less than perfect uh, uh, in doing that. But If you're, if you know, you're, if you're I, perfect, you'll be break, already gone. When, when I spoke yeah. of, uh, you know, is this two years or more of gross incompetence, or is it really uh, part of a, a population reduction uh, program by the globalist? And quite frankly, I've come to the conclusion it's part of a global population reduction program at Fukushima. You, you can't be that damn stupid for that many years when the problem is that big. I mean, you, you, you just... It's, per, it's purposeful. If you can chew gum and walk at the same time, you can figure out that this is something you better put number one on your priority list. Right. And what, what it is is purposeful not doing anything so women will become functionally sterile by radiologically destroying their eggs. It's purposely destroying the health of the mitochondria of the population so we're perfectly primed for an airborne plague. Uh, it's perfectly setting up... Which is up, coming uh, if you read the, uh, <clears throat> the, the latest stuff on mirrors because uh, the, the uh, rate of, uh, uh, of uh, mutation and the fact that the, the, the microchromal clock has been reset, they, they can't follow, they, they can't project the, uh, uh, the rate of mutations because it's being done uh, by man, not by nature. Right, and and so this what's being we're being set up for a really bad 
uh, a global mm. MERS uh, cool. pandemic probably yeah. in November. It's already, it's already spreading like crazy uh, from since the Hajj uh, is going to happen uh, next month. And Ramadan already happened. Um, Ramadan's already caused a massive explosion of cases that Henry Nyman talked about recently in Recombinomics. The, the fact is what's going on now is we have multiple candidate super viruses that are on the run. We've got multi-drug resistant dr- organisms everywhere, including multi-drug resistant now gonorrhea, Lyme disease, TB, etc. Uh, two to three million people every year get sick, and 23,000 minimum die from these resistant organisms. This problem number is probably a lot higher than that. And it's the end of the antibiotic age. It's the end of the antiviral age. They don't have any magic bullet well, for it. We do. A lot of these people, if they, <clears throat> if they took... Uh uh, intravenous vitamin C would uh, would probably survive because oh yeah, well they don't even need intravenous if they just take our if they can even make a feeding tube or take it orally the Power C Plus sixty grams a day twenty grams three times a day equivalent which is you know easy because each capsule is one and a half grams yeah if they take our antipathogenics Neutrodine which is the KCI and the most powerful then we take Allison Med and Silver one hundred immunoglobulin max you can totally not only stop a cytokine storm but kill the virus off dead. The fact is, the population are being told about hazmat activities to protect themselves as a radiation cloud. Pilots and, and stewardesses flying now from Malaysia Airlines have been told you can only fly one time a month from Malaysia to Vancouver, Canada, because the radiation dosage is so high. People are getting radiation sickness from flying through highly concentrated radiation plumes from Fukushima. This is not a rehearsal. This is the big show. This is not us speculating. This is not us saying this could happen in the future. It's happening. We're chronicling the present and the recent past. And the future looks very dark indeed unless there's an intervention by God. We see no action on support part of the globalists because they basically want absolute control, which is the mark of the beast, and surveillance. That's why even the Brazilian Prime Minister, President, wouldn't even meet with Obama after they were surveilling them and their government for years. That's why the surveillance system and the mark of the beast will be foisted by America on the entire planet. That's what the whole game is over. That Russia will be, the, in a sense, the other counterpoint controlling not only Islam, they've considered themselves, quote, the protector of Islam, and China. So that will be under the control of Mr. Putin or his compatriots. Uh, we're seeing a bipolar world coming together with a new world order. And I see a false peace treaty and a false peace coming together here very shortly after a period of... This is scary times, because if anybody twitches and has a bad day and decides to start this war, do, it's going to go I, like crazy. I, Dr. Bill, just to, just to highlight one more article, uh, according to Arnie Gunderson, also, TEPCO has admitted that the boron has disintegrated between the spent fuel. Uh, oh, why? You know, the spent, do you remember we talked about the... The boronated rubber, yeah. In other words, the yeah. boronated rubber has become particles and they're literally falling away from the... Do you remember, spent do you remember f- we talked about that? I was concerned about that a long time ago, and now it's... it's, it's My it's goodness, so that, that, that gets very close to a... Uh, uh, an out of control atomic Pyrophoric fire. fire. It's called a pyrophoric fire. It could be up to yeah. 6,000 degrees. Most of it will be turned into nanoparticles that can enter the troposphere and blow anywhere on the planet. Bad news. If you don't filter your water, and that including whether it's public water, well water, roof water, if you don't protect yourself with things like neutriodine, neutral defense, uh, neutrotrala, if you don't do these things right now, we're not talking about maybe down the road because Armageddon's coming. No, no. We're in the midst of disasters right the now that are going to turn. The killing, killing the planet. Yeah, yeah right. And it, it's, it's not the future. It's right now. Right now. Do something. Right now. I'll be on hour two and rinse tonight. Wanna listen?